it's friday time for bites and sips welcome to another session of bites and sips where we take in the word of god in a few minutes and we also you know escort it down with something nice i have myself a hot cup of tea get your drink ready and let's go into the word of god i recap in our last session you know we saw god as the promise keeper who never fails you know at just the right time he does what he said he would do the promise for the birth of isaac came at the time that he had planned that it would happen just as he had said it today's bite we continue in the same chapter 21 of genesis and we are reading from verse 8 to 13. so get your bible ready get your gadget ready let's go to genesis 21 we are reading from verse 8 to 13 and i read this is the niv version the child grew which child isaac the child grew and was weaned, and on the day Isaac was weaned, Abraham held a great feast. But Sarah saw that the son whom Hagar, the Egyptian, had born to Abraham was mocking. And she said to Abraham, get rid of that slave woman and her son, for that woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son Isaac. Verse 11, the matter distressed Abraham greatly because it concerned his son. But God said to him, do not be so distressed about the boy and your slave woman. Listen to whatever Sarah tells you, because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. I will make the son of the slave into a nation also because he is your offspring. Today's title, Crisis in a Party. <laughs> Abraham is celebrating a special occasion. That's what the, the, the verse, the bite today has opened with. The special occasion is that Isaac has, is, is now being weaned. It's the day he has started being weaned. So we assume it must be about six, uh, I mean three years, uh, you know, that he's now off breast milk. He's beginning to eat, you know. And as is natural for children, they are probably having fun playing outside there while their parents are, you know, fixing up the drinks and the food and the, and the you know, the goodies of a party. Sarah notices that Ishmael, the son to Hagar, is making fun. The Bible says making fun of. In some version it says mocking her son. And so the mother goose that she is, she wakes up and exerts her authority she whips out her manifesto a word that had become quite common in our election season in my country verse 10 it says and she said to abraham get rid of that slave woman and her son for that woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son isaac huh? suddenly the childish mocking the making fun has been connected to a much more serious agenda inheritance there is something deeper and significant about this scenario of two children at play and one mocking the other it is made reference to and explained in the new testament turn with me to galatians paul writes to the galatians and he's trying to explain to them about being put right with god by faith and not by observance of the law and he makes reference of this party scene in Genesis. This is what it says from verse 22. For it is written, this is Galatians 4, 22. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the slave woman and the other by the free woman. His son by the slave woman was born according to the flesh. But his son by the free woman was born as a result of a divine promise. These things are being taken, these things are being taken figuratively. The women represent two covenants. One covenant is from Mount Sinai and bears children who are to be slaves. This is Hagar. Now Hagar stands for Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to the present city of Jerusalem because she is in slavery with her children verse 26 but the jerusalem that is above is free and she is our mother 
for it is written, Be glad, barren woman, you who never bore a child. Shout for joy and cry aloud, you who are never in labor, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who, was, who has a husband. Verse 28, Now you brothers and sisters, like Isaac, are children of promise. At that time, the son born according to the flesh persecuted the son born by the power of the spirit. It is the same now. Verse 30. But what does scripture say? Get rid of the slave woman and her son. For the slave woman's son will never share in the inheritance with the free woman's son. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we are not children of the slave woman, but of the free woman. Amazing revelation here about our two boys at play during a party held in honor of one of them as we read in Genesis, our bite today. So there's a great difference here in Galatians between these two boys, between Ishmael and Isaac, between the free and the slave's sons. In Galatians 4, the Jewish legalists who troubled the Galatians, you know, protested that they were children of Abraham and they were blessed. Paul will admit, yes, you are children of Abraham, but they are like Ishmael, not Isaac. The legalists claimed that Abraham is their father, but Paul wants to know who is your mother. Is your mother Hagar or Sarah? That is the big difference. Ishmael was born of a slave, Hagar, and born according to the flesh. Isaac was born of a free woman, Sarah, and born according to promise. The son of the slave woman could never be anything else but that. He might become a great nation. Yes, that's what God promised. He might dwell in the wilderness and become an archer, very, a very skillful archer. He might become the father of uh, 12 princes. He might be everything but he was the son of the slave woman all the while on the contrary no matter how weak and despised isaac might be you're imagining him at three years old and uh, ishmael is about 13 and mocking him and making fun of him irrespective of how weak isaac may look he was the son of the free woman his position and character, his standing and prospects were all from the Lord. So Galatians 4, 22 to 29 is describing for us a spiritual application of this conflict between Isaac, the son born of the promise, and Ishmael, the son born of the flesh. And you know, Today, we talk of regeneration. Regeneration is not a change of the old nature, but it is an introduction of a new nature. It is the implantation of the nature or life of the second Adam by the operation of the Holy Spirit founded upon the accomplished redemption of Christ and in full keeping with the sovereign will or counsel of God. That's regeneration. The moment a sinner believes in their heart and confesses with their mouth the Lord Jesus, they become the possessor of a new life. And that life is Christ. He is born of God, is a child of God, is a son of the free woman. Romans 10, 9 says this, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So those that have declared this, they become children of God, sons of the free woman. The true gospel of grace offers liberty in Christ, and is a promise received by faith, not by works, by faith. It is free because it recognizes that Jesus paid the price 
and we don't have to pay it ourselves. We read in Galatians 4 verse 26, but the Jerusalem that is above is free and she is our mother. Even as Ishmael and his descendants have persecuted Isaac and his descendants, you know, in Genesis, Ishmael was mocking Isaac. We should not be surprised that the modern day people who follow God in the flesh, the Ishmaels of today, will also persecute those who follow God in the spirit, Isaac's people. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So whose son are you? Of the slave woman? or of the freed woman. The slave's son lives under bondage, under the law. He has no freedom. The free woman's son has freedom from the bondage of legalism, the law, sin, freedom from sin, and freedom from everything that binds. But they are joyously embracing life in fullness because they are freed. They are freed and given over freedom by Christ when they have come to believe in him. Christ accords them the freedom. That crisis in the party in Genesis continues today. On which side are you? Are you on Ishmael's side or Isaac's side? The slave woman or the freed woman? You are on Ishmael's side if you are still living in your sin. If you have not yet accepted the belief of Christ who gives you then the freedom to be a child of God, born of the free woman. If you have repented, then you have been made free and you belong to the side of the freed woman's son, Isaac's side. The offer of salvation is open for all of us. It's your decision today whether you'll be on the freed side or on the bond side, I pray that you make a decision to be a son of the freed woman. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the grace of salvation, the free gift of life that you have given us, a free gift of being called a child of God. Forgive us for taking too long to even acknowledge it in our lives. But this day, we acknowledge that you have indeed given us freedom, set us free from the bondage of sin, and given us freedom, given us salvation, given us an, a, a title that we are no longer just people of God, but we are children of God, heirs of the kingdom. We thank you, Father, we honor you in Jesus' name. And if you're there today and you have not said yes, you still belong to Ishmael's side, today you can cross over and be on Isaac's side. So pray this after me. Father, I come before you. I am a sinner. Forgive me. Set me free that I may no longer be bound to sin and the bondage of the enemy, the devil. Help me to live us a life of freedom, set free to celebrate you as Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Friend, salvation has become part of you. You have embraced the Son of God today. Live for Him. Live as a freed child of God, no longer a slave. Amen. Let's meet again next Friday, same time on Bites and Sips.